Hey everybody, my name is Lee. Welcome to Urban Traveler LA. Uh, about seven years ago, I was looking for a way to get around LA. I was tired of riding the bus. You know, it's just nobody's ever excited about being on the bus, right? Uh, my bicycle was stolen, didn't have a car, can't afford one. So I googled personal transportation and I came across uh, what was then called the Segway Mini Pro, which is basically this. Now this version that I'm riding is called the Ninebot S, and the reason it's called that is uh, a company in China called Ninebot purchased Segway several years ago. Um, and you know, something interesting happened. When I bought this, I thought they were going to be everywhere. I've just figured, God, there's going to be hundreds, thousands of these in West LA, uh, Los Angeles. It's such a great way to get around. You can carry them on the bus. You can put them under your shopping cart. Your hands are free, so you can carry groceries. Uh, didn't happen. The scooter, the rideshare scooters hit about a year after this. No learning curve for those. There's a little bit of a learning curve for this. And so long story short, these aren't even manufactured anymore. There's, you could still buy them, but they're no longer manufactured. There's some aftermarket companies that are making them, uh, but uh, nine bot Segway, they don't even make them anymore. 98% of their sales are the scooters. And they've moved on into, you know, uh, electric bicycles or battery powered bicycles and so forth. So, since they never caught on, I've become that guy who rides the mini Segway. And I sort of ride it in a very organic way. I ride it not unlike I'm snow skiing LA. So it catches a lot of attention. And I'm constantly getting asked about it. I'm, people are coming up to me all the time. I get videoed. Um, people are taking pictures, um, you know, it's just, I've had a really old man and, a, and a, later in the day, a really young girl say the same thing to me. That's cool. I hear things like, there goes future man, or, you know, are you from outer space? Um, you know, I get a lot of references to Back to the Future, and Michael J. Fox's hoverboard, because this actually moves in a manner that, um, you know, if, if you were to put me up against one of those green backgrounds and you wanted to do remove the wheels and make it look like I was floating around, it, the, the movement's already there. I mean, you literally, it feels, even when you ride it uh, on smooth uh, surface, you feel like you're off the ground. Um, so, you know, I thought it would be great to do a show that showed me riding this, as well as showing you some of the really unique things that LA has. You know, this is one of the most beautiful cities on the planet, in my opinion. You know, we've got the mountains, we have the ocean, we got beaches, we have beautiful parks. Uh, this is a playground for, for some of the world's greatest architects. Beautiful homes, beautiful buildings. Uh, if you love cars like I do, you know, this is the car capital of the world. I don't, Detroit, are you kidding me? There's just the sheer number of cars here and the sheer, just the variety of cars from old, rare, uh, to the fastest, the most expensive, uh, unique color. I mean, it's just, this is the car capital, no doubt about it. So I'll be showing you some cool cars. Um, but I'm also going to be sharing my journey with mental illness and how this has helped me reconnect with my fellow human beings. And I'll explain. Um, I have borderline personality disorder. If you Google the most painful mental illness, just type it in, most painful mental illness. What will pop up will say something to the effect of, studies have shown that borderlines or people with borderline personality disorder experience chronic and severe emotional suffering and mental agony. I mean, think about that, mental agony. Um, it's a very, very difficult way to live. There's so many symptoms that any one of them would just be, you know, any one of them can, can just really put you over the edge. And, and, and collectively, um, Put it this way, one in 10 of us will succeed in killing ourselves. And I've been in a suicide watch. I know what it's like to not want to live anymore. Um, 
your emotions are off the chart. Imagine if somebody created an Android robot and somehow the software got screwed up. Instead of him reacting in a slightly agitated way, he went into a full-on rage. Uh, or imagine that instead of being a little bit sad about some news, he suffered epic heartache for several days. I mean, that's what it's like to be a borderline. Your, your emotions are, are off the charts. Uh, severe depression. Uh, you, you ruminate all day long. You, your mind sends you painful thoughts. Anyway, it's, it's just a horrible way to live. And, uh, you know, I've had therapy and I found a way to make my life worth living. And one of the things that's helped me is this. Um, one of the things about being a borderline is we have a disconnect from those around us. We're considered the ultimate outsiders. It's like there's times when I feel like I'm an alien amongst people. You know, I see people like having dinner and talking and laughing and I'm like, what's that like? You know, it's it's so alien to me. And, you know, there was a time when I was able to do that, but it's been so long I've forgotten what it's like. Um, but this has helped me to reconnect with my fellow human beings. They're constantly coming up to me. Uh, instead of me just being this anonymous person that's moving around on a bike or whatever, I gain attention. I draw attention. People want to approach me. They want to talk about it. And let me tell you, it doesn't matter the demographic. It doesn't matter what language. It doesn't matter what ethnicity, uh, uh, what demographic you're in. Uh, economically, it does not matter. Uh, I've had everybody broken English, super wealthy, uh, gangbangers, nuns, it, it just doesn't matter. They all are fascinated by this because it's just not that common. So my show's gonna feature a lot of me writing. It, it just, people love it. I mean, I, you know, it's not uncommon for me to look over and see somebody videoing me or taking pictures. So we're gonna have a lot of footage of me writing. Uh, that just, people seem to dig it. So we're gonna do that. Um, and I'm going to be talking about my mental illness, as I mentioned. I'm going to be telling you ways that I cope. Um, even though I have a very severe mental illness, some of my symptoms a lot of people can relate to. One of the symptoms is severe depression. Uh, you know, in my mind, we've had a pandemic of mental illness forever. You know, it kills more people, uh, slow deaths, and, and just it, you know, secondhand deaths than you can even fathom. So uh, I'm going to be talking about ways that I cope with it and maybe it will help some people and maybe it'll help others like me uh, not feel so alone. All right. So uh, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button and, uh, you know, hopefully you'll tune in for my other episodes. All right. Cheers.